in the Blue Trunks playing Zerg to the northwest. It is Evil Genius of Stefano. Versus his opponent. Needs to perform a little better this time around. Exploit some holes in Stefano's play. To the southeast in the Red Trunks playing Temin is Complexity's Ganji. G -g 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 Ganji. Yeah. Loves a bit of a dance. Opa Ganji style. Opa Ganji style. And we're about to see. Can he pull it off against Stefano? Because if he doesn't, as mentioned, he will be out of the tournament here in the loser bracket round two. That would be so unfortunate for him as well. I mean, yeah. But uh, to be honest, like one of these, either of these guys going out of the tournament is kind of upsetting for fans. Yeah. Ga Ganji lately has attracted a great deal of fan base simply because he's he's a little bit crazy at times. He, he is crazy. He likes the dance. He likes to speak English. He speaks English very, very well. Yeah, he's and very handsome too. He's got he, great he, teeth. Yes, he absolutely does. That, yeah, that was the first thing I noticed about Ganji, his teeth. His, his hair teeth is good. particularly good. I'm... Uh, we should maybe get Wolf in here to consult on the matter of Ganji's hair, but unfortunately, since he is not here, we will not be able to do that. Regardless, it would be an upset for either of these guys to go out too early on, but that's the nature of the tournament. It is stacked. This is not... There is no bracket of death. They're all brackets of death, every one of them. And we're going to see top players going out left, right, and center here. Yeah. Well, I mean, we already saw Loves that go out in, the, in, the, in our previous game. We so were casting quick. winner... Yeah match one games in the mainstream earlier today now coming over to, to stream two where we're, we're casting loser bracket games and it's a sad place to be yeah this is why i don't like being on stream two and three because i see players go home game after game after game and it's sad man it is it, it definitely is, really is sad because compared to the mainstream it's all winner brackets You're like it's okay buddy you got a loser bracket game mm -hmm. left but down here it's the pits yep it is this is the shark pit and ganji is laying it all down the line he's going to gamble his life savings away on a cc first here Possibly the same one barracks build that we saw from him yeah. last time around. And what does Stefano do in this stage? He's going to see that CC in the next 20 or so seconds. Then does he throw down a Roach Warren again? Does he go for the same kind of aggression mm -hmm. again? That's I think it's question. a little bit too late this time to get the uh, Extractor down. Yeah, because you're probably if, I mean, right. If you think about what Stefano's seen in this game, it still could be a 2 racks for all he knows. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's why he sent out a drone outside his natural to have a look if there's any Marines or SCVs there. But now the Overlord's actually confirmed it. It's seen that there's a command center first down. Yep. He has no time to get uh, an Extractor and Roach Warren up. So the, yep. the most likelihood from here will be to play normal, to get the Queens out to three to four Queens into a third base. And he most likely from this will be expecting, Safano that is, uh, React to Hellion, Banshee play on a map like this, it's, it's, it's quite clearly strong. Fair enough. Well, Ganji has cut corners and it seems like it's paid off for him at the moment because, of course, no aggression is coming. With an Extractor still not down, there was no possibility that we will be seeing Roaches anytime soon from him. But this one barracks into CC, straight into Factory, and then switching over to Red Flame Hellion is going to give him just an amazing power-up start to his economy. And it's going to give him a number of possibilities. Now... I've got to be honest, in the last six months, I don't think I've ever seen Stefano take significant damage from Hellion Banshee. Have you ever actually seen that happen? No, he doesn't really do that anymore. He used to, but he doesn't anymore. I mean, a lot of Zerg players are tying it up, but with this build we've seen from Ganzi, it does involve a third command center because it's only one gas. Yeah. And with only one gas, you're sure he can eventually get a star port down, but it won't have cloak. Yeah. So he may want to go for what we mentioned before, or what we saw before, should I say, is Tank Marine to protect his third command third, center yeah. from any aggression from Stefano. And we'll see because he there will have enough gas for a starport shortly. He can throw it down, but it depends if how, how Ganzi wants to play this. Well, it's certainly working out better so far because, of course, by this point, we saw 10 SCVs going down and yeah. a lot of aggression coming out from Stefano in the first place. So the Hellions are going to get an opportunity to do some damage. The rocks have not been knocked down here either, and they're not going to be knocked down for quite some time. In fact, it looks like Stefano's saying, you know what, I'm not going to knock them down just yet. And that, that could cause them a few problems, certainly. To, trying to track down Hellions while being off creep is a lot more difficult to do. And it, you know what's even more difficult? Defending this without speed. Yeah. I mean, there's only one Hellion, though. At the uh, moment, He's actually yeah. switched over. Oh, has he? Okay. With, well, or no should be switching then. over. Yeah. yeah. So he's going to switch over now. They're going straight for double engineering bay off one barracks, basically. So he will want to get stim down. Will want to get double upgrades. So he's going to play very, uh, very aggressive with his upgrade setup. The one thing that he will not have here is any creep denial at all. There's no Hellions, there's no Banshees. There's no harassment ability either for Ganzi. just straight out. Boxing gloves on. This is my army I'm going to create, and it's going to be big and strong. Yeah. But Stefano, to capitalize on that, should be creep spreading insanely. Should 
by the time that Ganzi wants to take a third base because he can't take it easily, there should be creep on the other side of the map, even touching it, if Stefano plays this out right. Well, let's see if he does. Well, he's bringing out some lings onto the field. So plus one, plus one, and the metabolic boost upgrade coming in for defensive purposes here. Nice little wall off by Ganji. So the natural is not under any real threat at this stage. But and here comes this creep spread that we're talking about. This Hellion is trying its best to deny it. And, and it's just one Hellion. It's doing what it can. And it's unfortunately not even going to be able to kill that one creep tumor. I think it needs a, a bit of a weapons upgrade there. Yeah, that Hellion is just kind of scout the third base, can't do anything, knows that Creep Spread's no. going to be there, knows the double evolution chamber's going to be there. And to be honest, you know, this is, uh, as a Zerg player and the Terran player, uh, looking at both sides, I've been in this scenario before and I really like it as a Zerg player here. From both sides, the Creep Spread will be insane. Stefano will go straight for 2 2 in Infestation Pit. There's no harassment available. But on the plus side, is Ganzu's attacks are going to be a lot stronger. He's going to have 2 2 a lot faster in this game. Yep. Uh, he may not have the army size out initially early on because he's put all his money into upgrades. But very shortly, he will be able to take a third base as Stearman 1 1 nears completion as he's now killing the rocks. And he will look most likely for a 2 2 timing because the upgrades are so fast. It'll hit before Stefano can actually get to Hive or anything along those lines. That it will. And uh, Ganji is now just going to have a look outside of his base, see what he can find here. Just picks up an errant link. This creep spread is starting to get ridiculous. Yeah, that's, that's how we should be playing this out. Yeah. Like, there's no Hell, no Banshees. He should have creep spread by the third base as fast as he can. Yep, and that's exactly what he's doing. He's pushing currently in both directions as quickly as he can. Has a queen dedicated to doing just that. And of course, the ability to spread by these creep tumors as well. Now, I would expect to see just a little bit of drop play coming in soon from Ganji. He just needs to just start harassing yeah. because you know, while it sounds great that he's on the 10-minute mark taking this third base and he's got a lot of money in the bank, his production facilities are rolling fine. He's not doing any damage to the Zerg player either. He's sitting comfortably on three bases, which is a nasty situation to be in regardless. Yeah. Because he could come at you with all sorts of different nasty little things. At the moment, Stefano rolling out a reasonable number of lings. He's probably going to try and pressure this third yeah, base a little bit. he's going to try and overwhelm it, actually. Yeah. And uh, that may be possible. Ling, Bane Ling right now against no tanks. Good. Doable. In, in Sweden, they say bra huit. Which means? Good shit. Really? Well, they would be correct in that assumption. That is a nice little grab right there. I know some Swedish. What's that? I use this with Hellions. It's Skarvi Griller. Yeah, that's right, man. Can we grill it? And the answer is, of course, always yes. We can, in fact, grill it. But right now, Stefano has decided you will not have this third base anytime soon. Yeah, Tank, though, says I do want it. I don't know if that one tank's going to be enough, because, oh, quite look. frankly, where are the medivacs? Yeah, it's getting denied. Stefano has the fourth base. He has the Hive on the way. Very early Hive. Look at that. 11-minute Hive. Wow. Uh, previous game, it was 11.45. This game, it's 11. So he's cut corners upon what his opponent's doing. But still, that 2-2 two -two timing is there. It's not going to be as strong as initially planned because of how late this third base is being from Saturate. So he doesn't uh -huh. have that extra income. But he's still going to be able to use a 2-2-1 two -two timing here, I feel. Uh, moving out is the best timing. Uh, but at the same time, there's going to be a lot of infestors. The creep spread is gorgeous. Look at it. It's purple. It's pink. It's out there. And it is very, very strong. Look at that. Absolutely. And the worst thing about that is it means the push is really going to start at the edge of the creep. And that means that the push ends up reaching a target of value much later than it otherwise would have. Uh, here we It's coming now. The yep. initiation of this push is coming. The drop is the first part of it. And it's going to go to try and pull Stefano out of position. And then he's going to try and move. But Stefano, look at the minimap. He's all on the Zelnoga Tower. If Ganji moves out on siege, Stefano will come and go crunch and will kill everything. Stefano's map vision is actually ridiculous. Like yeah. uh, On both sides of the map, he's completely drop proof, assuming that he just doesn't decide to completely ignore it. And Actually, like, to the point, I this know, drop actually have could there. do some damage here, yeah, because all the links are moving out. I think out. he's just saying, screw it, I'm going to kill this kill this army, yeah. like, right now. Yeah, I, oh, and that fungal's going to be a really, really good start to it as well. The tanks were not deployed in time, and this looks like a complete oh. overwhelming attack here. The Banelings connect in a huge way, and Stefano doesn't care for your drop. Yeah, uh, that's exactly right. I'm pretty sure he saw it, he just didn't care at that time. He is going to defend it now, and Ganzi loses his entire 13-minute army in a matter of seconds. He didn't even get to push out. He essentially just took three steps out of his base and then died. 
which is not good at all. And that's, I suppose, a Stefano style of crushing it, and he did it pretty well. But what I've got to say at the moment is Ganji actually does have the supply lead. There's not a lot of army on the map. It's just Lings right now. Yeah, and Ganji, is he going to stim and try to get up to the fourth base he before might. Stefano can get out more units? Because he's making the switch over to Ultralis here, and he is going to try and do it, but I think there's going to be Infestors. Oh, no! no energy! Oh, well, uh, oh, no, there it is. There it is. Okay. One energy. The medivacs are out of position again. Ganji's medivacs are the worst medivacs, and he is being uh, pushed back completely. Stefano will watch Infested Terrans, but then like, oh, crap. Uh, they're, any, yeah. they're leaving. Oh, they're yeah, fungal. I guess. There's, there's one Infested has tried desperately to pedal its in energy up. There was actually one there, but he knows he can't kill it. But, oh, Ganji keeps making mistakes with these medivacs. Actually, it's kind of frustrating to watch because he, he never has the medivacs in the right position to actually heal through any of the fungals or anything like that, so... I, I, either he's being overly cautious with them because he doesn't want to get them fungled, or he just has them out of position a lot. We saw this in the last game as well, and it doesn't help him at all. Another drop coming in now, and Stefano's in a position to hold it. In fact, he, he's going to get a complete grab on this. That was perfect. Yeah. And they can't even unload in that position. No, Stefano's going to pick that off easy peasy, as the Infested Terran should do it. Yep. There we go. And. Right now, with 3-3 three, three on the way for Ganji, he will try to attempt to take a fourth base. Stefano, on the other hand, though, will try to deny it as much as possible. But as you see, the upgrades connecting for Stefano, the 3-3 three, three, and the plus 5, which, you know, added together there, or well, the plus uh, two more armor, a yep. uh, total of plus 5. When that connects is when Stefano will be at his strongest in this game. Before that, he's weak. He won't want to take too many fights. But as soon as those upgrades complete, when Stefano gets out that French flag, and starts waving it about because he will be 2-0 if he takes a fight when all those upgrades are completed together and Ganji is out of position. We oui, wee, oui. he absolutely will. Another drop coming in by the looks of it, and another drop actually, and Ganji's able to do some damage with this one. Quick pickup out of there before the links, trying to pull his opponent apart and obviously delay any big push here, but well, there's Ultralist oh, and Creep, creep on the fourth well. base. You can't oh. even put the blink and thing down at the minute, so Ganji's going to be forced to move away from that. Drop's been picked up and is now moving towards the third base. Lings are ready to receive that. This base is vulnerable, although he's only going to pick up maybe five, six drone kills if he drops there. He's going to go for the main instead. There isn't actually anything there to stop that at the moment. Yeah, Stefano's playing probably the best game on Ohana out of his entire day today. Yeah. And excluding I didn't see Hero versus Stefano game three. Apart from that, I've seen all his games and this is his best one today. Yeah, he's playing really, really well, honestly. He's cleaning up these drops as best as he can. Ganji is looking to be maxed out here. Yeah. And but this timing, as you point out, this window is rapidly closing and here. Oh, he's, it could actually anti-time if Ganji's going to move down and Stefano's going to complete with his upgrades very soon. Yeah, they're going to complete it around the same time, but he's going to have a slight lead. So yeah. if he runs into 3-3 three, three with only 2-2 two, two and plus 2 on the tanks, then he's going to be in a great deal of trouble. And Stefano uh, will want to throw down the spy as soon as he starts to bank money. Or he doesn't and just starts to save for another big ultra army, which is possible. But we'll see which one. There's two options for him to choose from. Obviously, the, the whatever he chooses will be able to identify very easily because the spy will be on its way. But yep. Stefano's upgrades are completing. Links and Ultra is now running down the corridor. I mean, this creep at the natural ramp at this point. That's how ridiculous this is. 13 Ultralisks on the map here. Stefano gets repulsed in his first engagement, though. Takes a significant amount of damage. Ganji just doesn't want to be overstimming here. It's just gone. It's blown up. It's just been melted. Yeah, it's absolutely gone. Overrun by Ultralisks here. That army oh. there had really good Bane Link connection here as well. And Ganji just took a huge hit. And Stefano has seven more Ultras on the way. That's his decision. New army. He says. More ultras, and yeah. Yeah, uh, Ganji's army won't last very long. Maybe, yeah, it'll pick off this right hand side base. But if Stefano just gets everything together one more time, he will crush this army. Stefano with a base on the left hand side doesn't care that much about this one. He doesn't. Infestor's also coming in right there. Infestor Terrence right next to it. A fungal growth on everything. Oh. That's absolutely disgusting. Ganji is about to get obliterated here, one would think. Assuming the reinforcements come in, there's not actually enough ultralists, I think, to kill the army entirely. Oh, yeah, maybe there are. Yeah, two Ultras there against those Marines. Yeah, Mercury they're out of there. Out. Stefano keeps the base. He didn't need to keep it. He didn't need to save it. He could have taken a anyway. more cost-efficient army and fight, but he did it anyway. And now with five bases alive, the greatest fight definitely will come down if he wants to play it long-term, a guarantee. Uh -oh. The Medivacs that were so close there. Stefano could... Oh, I, I saw that coming a mile away. I'm surprised Ganji didn't. And that could be a second fungal. And that's a lot of Medivacs down there. There were 14 Medivacs in total. That's three just picked off very easily there. Stefano overruns the fourth base. And Ganji is in horrible, horrible trouble here. Yeah, he's in uh, a really bad position. Because his main and natural should be mined out by this time. His third is probably minutes away as well. And he needs a fourth. And, that, you know, he's dropping at the same time to try and do something to Stefano, but Stefano's army at this stage 
50 supply difference. This drop's going to get cancelled out as well. Stefano's completely ready for that already. Fungal combined with that. It's, Stefano makes this look ridiculously easy, honestly. He really does. He is all over the place. And Ganji now says, well, I've got to take this fourth base. But how, yeah. do, how, how can he hold it? And he's lifted with up what? his main command center. So that's the only option he has to take a fourth base. And it's it's not a good one because, no. uh, I mean, he, he needs a planetary fortress on that base. And that drop goes down. And Stefano so close to moving on to another round in this loser bracket, having lost the hero a little bit earlier on today. Mm, throwing uh, away at yeah. this point seems unlikely, honestly. And Stefano knows exactly what he's doing. He's waiting for the appropriate time. And he knows if he crushes the fourth base, he yeah. kills the army in the process, and that's it. That I mean, we, we've seen players like uh, drop the ball like this before. I think Life versus Flash is a big example. Mm. Walk your infestors away. They lose them all, then you're dead. Yeah. Um, you know, the, there is still the option for Ganji, but is Stefano going to make that mistake? I don't think so. It just seems unlikely. Ling run by the main base is going to start ravaging the reinforcements and it's going to start doing significant production line damage here. And is Ganji seriously just going to try to base trade at this stage? And Stefano will immediately come around to fight that army. Definitely. Yep, as soon as he spots it on the creep, that's going to be one dead ultra. Two dead ultras, again, Not that's not particularly efficient at all there for Stefano. Fungals. But it's coming in, the fungal at the front. Gadget's got to avoid more fungals like that. Got to get the great concave, but I don't think he's going to be able to do that. The investors borrow right now. He doesn't have the firepower to stop this from happening here. The ultralists crash through, and quite frankly, Ganji is looking deader by the minute. A huge yeah. reinforcement wave comes in, and there is the GG. And that, as they say, is that. For we, we miss sure. Yeah. Who is next? Uh -huh. Yeah. So uh, Stefano gets that win. Yep. 2 0 over Ganji. Impressive. Continues his streak against Ganji. I don't think he's even lost to Ganji before, but Stefano was looking shaky today, but 2 0. Yeah, that was a phenomenal piece of TBZ there from Stefano. So clearly he, he tightens up. It's unbelievable. He tightens up in yeah. the course of one game. He was looking a little dodgy on game one, but game two was just perfect play across the board. Ganji had a couple of opportunities to do damage, but honestly, they were shut down so effectively that yep. it, he didn't even seem like he had much of a chance there. That's right. So Stefano's story does not end here no, on not. Stream 2, but another game that's coming up for you right away, pretty much, is going to be Violet.